Here's a little insider travel secret from our friends at Hotel Tonight. There are tons of empty hotel rooms out there just waiting to be booked. That's how Hotel Tonight scores such incredible deals. They team up with awesome hotels to help them sell these rooms and pass those savings along to you. They're not like last resort places. They work with cool, top-rated hotels where you actually want to stay. And even though their name is Hotel Tonight, you can actually book up to 100 days in advance in some destinations and up to a week in advance everywhere else. So if you want to start scoring amazing deals at incredible hotels, download the Hotel Tonight app now. Welcome to Bachelor Party. If you're listening to this podcast, I assume it's because you like The Bachelor. And so I recommend checking out every Monday night right after the episode, Roger Sherman's Bachelor Recaps on TheRinger.com. He points out all the minutia that makes The Bachelor so much fun. And it's generally a great read. So remember, check it out. Roger Sherman, Bachelor Recaps on TheRinger.com. And now let's batch. It's week seven. Ari's in Tuscany with his ladies. And with me today, I have Rob Mills from ABC. I know. I'm your lady today. You're you're the lady of the hour. Um, <laughs> Thank you, you. You are the senior vice president of alternative programming at ABC. I am, yes. And so The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, and all associated shows are part of your domain. All under my purview. All, all, all you. Mm-hmm. Um, you've been on the show before. So I have. Many people will be familiar with you. Yes. And I'm thrilled you're back. I love coming on this show. Oh, well, yes. thank you. I know. Um, let's talk about this episode, Tuscany. Tuscany. I was worried it was going to be bad because last week, Lauren B., What's with these blonde Lauren B's? Was that it, it was is that, interesting? Was that remarked upon when she was cast? No, but oh uh, yeah, I'm just, I th- we all talked about it. But I feel like there's not enough being made in just the the bachelor nation about a second fact, Lauren B, blonde Lauren B's. Yeah, yeah there's she, she's what are their allures? I, I, and we'll have to talk a little bit about. Obviously, we'll talk a little foreshadowing about Winter Games. Yes, and of ben course. Higgins. Like clearly, Lauren B's. They, they capture have, the imagination. There is something about them, yeah. That, we're going to get into that. But first, I just want to talk about Ari in general, as you know, yes. you're so close so mm-hmm. close to the flame with this one. <laughs> Ari was out of the system mm-hmm. for five years, and it really is like a system. Which, it's absolutely a system. It's yeah. Like, yeah. And and now with Winter Games, you're expanding it to be a very challenge-like, where I, there'll be an mm-hmm. even, even bigger pool of people to populate uh, yes, these shows. Right. How did Ari get cast when Peter didn't work out? Hashtag not Peter. <laughs> Hashtag not Peter, which I think I, I mentioned this before on the um, the part we didn't see, which wasn't filmed, the bus ride back where Chris had her meltdown. Yes. That was her big thing. She could be, Hashtag not Peter. So why wasn't that filmed? It was just, you don't think anything's really going to happen. Come like, on. That's just a bus ride. Come on. No, I mean, I mean obviously, look, that's our bad. Yeah. We will film bus rides from now on. Yeah, because I presumably they're all mic'd up already, right? Like they don't get demiked in between activities, right? They don't get demiked, but you're not, you know, you're just you're traveling in this small van. You know, you don't think mm-hmm. anything's gonna happen. Does a producer ride with them other than the driver? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So at least someone was available to know what happened. Some of their copious notes were taken. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Got it. I mean, if I'm that producer, I whip out my phone and I just start recording on my the voice memo. Good call. Actually, we're gonna fire that producer now. You're totally right. I mean, so good. It yeah. sounds like essential mm-hmm. information. Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah. So it was hashtag not Peter. Hashtag that's why, not Peter. Why Crystal flipped out? Did mm-hmm. Ari find out? That's what she was saying. I don't know. I know he he certainly heard. Enough to to know that was the general. I don't know if he heard exactly that, but he knew. Mm. My guess would be yes, but um, I don't know for sure. Got it. How did he? How did Ari get cast when when hashtag Peter didn't work out? Not Peter. Uh, he was. Uh, look, there were a lot of names that, that we did talk about. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, one was Dean, who just it felt too young. like it felt too young. It also felt like you're, you know, you're you're going very close into. Not necessarily parody. I actually think Dean is very sincere and mm-hmm. Dean's going to make a great husband someday. But right now, what do we really know about Dean? Very little. Very little. That he's a weird dad. He's an F-boy. Yeah, Parham <laughs> Roop is his dad. And um, He's an F-boy. That's true. Mm-hmm. We can curse on this pod. It's fine. Oh, okay, he's, he's a, a fuck, fuck boy. boy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ari is somebody whose name always seems to come up. Sure. He was very, very close when it was him and Sean Lowe. Like it was, it was neck and neck. And oh, it's funny. Interesting. I talked to Leslie Murphy about this. I said, so, you know, when you were on Sean's season and she said, I was really hoping it was going to be Ari. Oh, interesting. And that's who, who she wanted to be. And it's interesting, you know, the reaction to Ari, we clearly, we can talk about what the reaction has been this season, mm-hmm. but what that reaction would have been. I mean, for me, I remember Sean was so ready to clearly, obviously, get married, which yes. he did, have kids. Yeah. They seemed like very happy too. Yeah, they did. So that worked out great, but- 
Ari's always one of those ones that you 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 heard his name a lot. Yes. I just think that Ari was too soon mm-hmm. five years ago, and now it's like a touch too late for him. Just in just in the bachelor landscape. I, I don't think you're wrong. I think that's exactly right. It's also interesting watching Ari on Emily's season and seeing him this season too. In some ways, he you know, some of these guys are much better. Like Nick Vile, mm-hmm. way better when he's not in a house of 25 guys. Yes. You know, he is not a guy's friend at all. Right. He is actually much better with women. And I think that's why he's shown on Paradise, because he was able to be kind yes. of like a big brother. Yeah, and, him and Ashley was very endearing. Yeah. And I think that's where Nick took the leap. I think Ari, in some ways, was better in a house with of guys. bros. Yeah. Because he was so good. You know, there was a whole incident. I don't know if anyone remembers it's five years ago, but Doug, this big guy, the father, and he was nervous about going on a date. And Ari starts doing like, you know, Doug is the Hulk. And he can be very <laughs> funny in ITMs, you know, sure. commenting on this. He was able to diffuse situations and be funny. It's interesting watching him when he's the lead. Yeah. So his biggest flaw is he's a bad narrator, essentially. And you, gosh, I know. You're so astute. <laughs> Thank Joy. you. I mean, but it is. You're, you're absolutely right. Like, if he was like Ben or even Nick, who speaks mm-hmm. to the camera really well. I mean, Ben is, I think, everyone's gold standard. It's actually interesting. I also like to think I was early on the Ben train, but like... You're ev- totally early on the Ben train. Everyone loves Ben now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, 100% approval rating, yes. except for maybe Lauren. So there's one detractor in the world. Mm-hmm. But with and so we got really used to the lead carrying the show, and yes. Ari just cannot do it. So it's been funny seeing Chris Harrison. I think have it's a tough. he's comeback. good in the moment, but we get moments on dates that we've never had before. Like he what? engages with people. You know, I mean, you talked about it last week on your show. You know, the, the moment with Lauren B. where he yeah. talked about you know losing the child. Yeah. Uh, he really just you know his date with Chelsea, where he he talked about you know he wants to know about you. Yeah. And he listens to what you have to say. Yes. Uh, more than any other. You know, some of them, it's it's really difficult. But sure. Ari, I feel like he engaged with every woman. So when he did tell the story about his ex having the miscarriage, what was the uh, first conversation like when the dailies are coming? They still call them dailies on reality TV? When, you can call them that, sure. When they're looking at the, like the, that footage mm-hmm. from that date. The rushes, yeah. Is there any conversation about, any, any tentativeness about airing that conversation? No, it was actually, I mean, first of all, again, it was a day with Lauren B. So it was like, sure. thank God there's some conversation here. We can, <laughs> yeah. But um, no, if anything, it was like, wow, this is really refreshing. And it made, yeah, you know, I, it's I like, agree. this is a real person. Yeah. And it does remind you that the, and that that's the, to me, the beauty of Ari as a bachelor is that he's literally going to finish the season and go back to Arizona and sell houses. Shh, maybe it. sell houses. Maybe sell a house or two so, or something. Yeah, he'll attempt to sell houses. Um, would you go back this far into Bachelor history to find a lead again? Do you think that his like time away from the show has hurt the ratings or the season? No, I mean, I think that, you know, the ratings are down and it is interesting to, to figure out why. I mean, I also do think that there, you never get an accurate read on the ratings for Bachelor. Right. Because so many people, I mean, I remember, I think I've said this before, Jimmy Kimmel, when he hosted on Chris Souls' season, he was like, those ratings are bullshit on that show because I got more feedback on that yeah. than anything I've ever done in my career. Yeah, like as a producer and as an executive, how much stock do you put into like the the Twitter and like social conversation that's going on? I think, well, a lot for this show you do. Yeah. Because you do, certainly you get a gauge on it. And there are people... He, you know, to your point, Ben Higgins, 100% approval rating. There yeah. is definitely not that with Ari. Yeah. I think unfairly so. Yeah. But, it's it's you tough. Know. He just, he just is obviously, I mean, the way he speaks to the women is like kind of, it's just like really hilarious. Like, and for whatever reason, it does not translate on camera as as well in person. Yeah. I'm dying You'll to meet him for this women, reason. You know, and we'll talk about like, because you see in that, in, we'll talk about Jacqueline's exit, but yeah, like how she's like, bizarrely she's like r- attracted she's- to him she's like oh my god i need to down this wine or i can't do this like, <laughs> let's talk about that yeah. so that was a pretty unprecedented probably in ari's life not a lot of precedent for it on the bachelor right jacqueline this week there's seven women and they're going down to four because hometowns mm-hmm. are next week so he has to get four roses and three women will go home jacqueline uh has all this like she's very like tense a lot of anxiety mm-hmm. and she just recognizes that she doesn't feel for ari the way she thinks that other women do yeah and so she confronts him after it's weird it's like date. a continuation of their date from last week yeah because didn't you expect him to not give her the rose absolutely on the date? i was shocked she got one right exactly Re- because and then, they have nothing in common but no. and she, ari basically said as much yeah and he was like, you're too smart for me, right. which was one of my favorite moments. Oh, no, absolutely. It was great. It's it's great to admit that you're not that smart. Yeah. Like, why not? Absolutely. You know, don't go through your life with somebody that, you know, 
that's not on your level. Not on your level. Yeah. yeah. You gotta you gotta meet each other on mm-hmm. an intellectual plane. But as we see, she has this bizarre so you can tell yeah. when she goes so to his room. She, so she goes to his room, she's really nervous, she's like shaking. I, I really related to the girl. And mm-hmm. she was just like, I'm just really nervous. I don't think I'm in the right place. Yeah. And then she's like so flustered around him that all she can do is down her wine and then start making out with him. She's like, Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> I've got a kid. Like she, it is weird. She and was like, I'm to ins- me, I think she said, like, I'm insanely attracted to you. And to your point about how Ari either grows on you or the season grows on you. You, Ari may not be, at least on camera, a, a lightning rod, but clearly there's something. It's not like the girls, even though, as as he said, for sort of bluntly, I know that a lot of these girls might have been expecting someone else. Yeah, they're clearly into him. Yeah, absolutely. And he's got some weird appeal. I, I'm, I'm he really, must be a very good kisser. He must be. He also, I think, does a lot of face caressing, mm-hmm. which, while it's awkward to lo- watch yeah. on TV, it probably feels like in the moment, like, oh, he's like really into me or whatever. I've heard girls say, oh yeah, that's the best thing you can do is like yeah. touch a girl's face. Yes. So he clearly <laughs> knows that. And I wonder. Do you think like Jacqueline was like, you know, I'm going to just be dating prof- adjunct professors and things like that now. So I need to get my last licks with Ari. Probably. Get, you know. Also, Ari, as you said, is like so Arizona. And she yeah. she works at Mount Sinai Hospital right. in Manhattan, yeah. which is like as far as you can get from yeah. the Arizona vibe yeah. while this, being in the same this country. This is the last I'm going to get of Arizona. <laughs> like she probably was like, I haven't seen the sun in three months, <laughs> but Ari like is is therefore is my son or That's something right. like yeah, that. That's right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so then she breaks up with him. And mm-hmm. I would like to guess that Ari's probably been broken up with under three times in his life. He was really flummoxed by it. He was. Well, you we saw Emily, Emily broke up with him. Yes, that's true. Well, clearly we know at least three now. We know we the know woman, three. Yes. The, the, the single mom, Yes, Emily, Emily, and now Jacqueline. And he was shocked when Emily broke up with him. Like, shocked. He was, oh, I was there that day. Oh, were me. you? He was, yeah. In Curacao? He was, yeah, in Curacao, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was he upset? I think shocked was the right word. Uh-huh. It was a complete, gu- because it also was, she did that thing that Ali Fedotowski pioneered, which is the, Let I don't talk- want to make the guy go through right. the whole thing and show up and have him be like, no, don't get down on one knee. I need to tell you. So she finally knew it was definitely Jeff with one F. Mm-hmm. And um, so she she said, OK, I got to see him. So Ari thinks they're going to make like some love potion. Right. And she comes in and then you saw it, like she says. Uh, but it's interesting. Yeah, I'll too. never forget. They're in that clearing in the woods. Mm-hmm. They're both very upset. It was, that was a good episode. But the other thing. Ari is a very interesting thing, and I only bring this up because it's interesting to to watch. Watch the rest of the season here, and I okay. this. Ari's big thing, whether you're bringing up with him, he's bringing up with you, he's saying goodbye, something is bad, he really needs a hug. Yes. And he, he says that. I mean, even with Emily, I remember he was very, you know, or upset and like, I don't understand, like, we had this, but then he's like, oh, give me a hug. Like, his big thing is a hug. He's touchy. He's touchy. Okay. So if he doesn't get that hug, it's like, you know, <laughs> he needs it's an OCD thing. It's like, I haven't knocked three times on the door. I cannot come in. Yeah. He needs the, mm-hmm. he needs some kind of reassurance. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. The Jacqueline move was like amazing. I, yeah. I don't, to, I like her a lot, but I don't see her having a big future in Bachelor Nation. Do you think she's, I, I would love to get her in Bachelor it, in Paris Meredith's. just because I think she'd be interesting. Jacqueline is really a different kind of Bachelor contestant than we're used to seeing. And I want to talk more about casting and how these women were all found for this season. But first, Mm -hmm. let's hear from Sean Fennessy, the editor-in-chief of The Ringer and the host of the Big Picture podcast on The Ringer Podcast Network. Hey, guys, this is Sean Fennessy, the editor-in-chief of The Ringer. And I want to tell you about a podcast I host called The Big Picture. Each week, I welcome a different filmmaker to talk about their latest movie and how it was made. I've talked to the directors of some of my favorite movies, including Jordan Peele, Greta Gerwig, Ryan Johnson, Barry Jenkins, and dozens more. You can find new episodes on the Channel 33 feed every Friday by going to theringer.com backslash podcasts or by subscribing to Channel 33 wherever you get your podcasts. I hope you'll check it out. Okay, one thing I've been curious about for this season these women are so so superior to uh, they're just a superior mm-hmm. crop. I mean, that's like a they it's are. just a mean a what, it's mean. Crop. It's mean, but <laughs> yes. true mm-hmm. to mean to the previous women. Yeah. But like they all have legit careers. I did quite a bit of research. Mm-hmm. CN freaking went to Yale. Oh no, it's crazy. I yeah. mean, they are, we have multiple like graduate school level educated women mm-hmm. here. Um, was there a different kind of search put out for the for this casting or is this just the trend of who's watching The Bachelor? I think it's a little bit of everything. I mean, sometimes you do get, you just get lucky. But I think there was, yeah, there absolutely was a concerted effort to get, you know, when you say 
diversity. Sure. It doesn't, you know, it means just just different types of people. Sure. You know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and real careers. I think there was a little backlash after Nick's season of mm-hmm. this is all whatever, make believe or whatever. You know, he he got engaged to um, Vanessa. Yes. It felt from the get go, this wasn't real. It's not going to work out. I think part of that was Nick really tried. I mean, he spent a lot of time in Canada. Yeah. But I think there was a feeling like, oh, it's going back to that old thing where it doesn't really mean anything. They're kind of play acting. So it was a, and it was part of the reason why Ari was so great. Cause it was like, well, this guy, yeah. he doesn't want to be famous. He has not hung around. He wasn't really on social media. This like, season has really seemed like a hard reset in, yeah. in a good mm-hmm. way. No, I think it, it, look, you need to do that every now yeah. and then. I mean, it's weird because it's The Bachelor, but every season is different. Yeah. And I remember the best thing that happened after Sean Lowe, which was considered one of the, you know, the great all-time seasons. It, it, it was? It fulfilled the premise of, oh, absolutely. that season was really big. Interesting. I think that season was successful partially because Catherine is so great. Or but so, Catherine so was seems. not She wasn't seen. even on it. Well, she's, Catherine was not even on it. I, I mean. I fear that that's what's happening with Lauren B. It's like she was not on the first, like, four episodes, basically. She was one of the mm-hmm. blondes, right. and then she came on strong, like, two weeks ago, basically. And well, now he's the other interesting so thing, The difference there, though, is that on Ari's depth chart, things kept always <laughs> moving. It's like, oh, my God, I love this person, but I also really love this person, too. When, I mean, Crystal was, was number one for a little bit there. How did you guys cast Crystal? Who, who found her, and did you know she'd be this, this uh, rich of a text? No, but I will say she was somebody that I believe was actually on the bubble. Oh. And there's one producer who really fought for her. Mm. Um, and he was very, very smart and obviously right. And she was great. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, she... But it was the, like I said, it was the concerted effort of the, you know, okay, the you, know, you didn't necessarily want a Corinne this season. Yes. You know? I'm glad there's not one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. When the Bachelor back in the early, early days started to get in trouble was when it, it just felt like literally carbon copy every yeah. season. Yeah, it seems like the women like each other this season. Yeah, they do. There's a lot of, I think there's sort of subtle, I wouldn't be friends with this person in real life, but not sure. the, well, there's a lot oh, of the I characters. hate her. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. There really are a lot of them. Yeah. And one of them, we keep alluding to her, but let's just talk about it, is Lauren B. She is not a character. She's like your classic Bachelor gal, minus the talking. She absolutely, yeah, I think you're totally right. She classic is, Bachelor gal. She is like the Chris Souls of women. Uh, when, you think Chris Souls was a classic bachelor guy? Well, Interesting. Chris didn't really talk either and seemed to like really like get psyched out by the camera or whatever it was. Chris didn't talk. Chris's one big moment was when Andy let him go. Right. So Lauren B. got a back-to-back episodes, got one-on-one dates. Has mm-hmm. that ever happened before? I'm sure it's happened before because there's there's not many left. Right. Uh, going, I think getting one six and seven is like kind of big though. That's a little odd that she didn't get one. Until to your point, six. classic bachelor. Like you would have thought she would have gotten one in like three. Three for or, sure. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely. So that was more the the odd thing was that she got a one on one so late. Also that we um haven't seen her like in a hot tub at all. Like usually if we you're... haven't seen Ari in a hot tub. I much. know. Does he not want to be in a hot tub? Well. The other thing with him getting the job so late, I don't think he got himself in. He's not in hot tub He was like, I wish I had known this six weeks ago. I'd stop eating bread. (laughs) Which which now that that you see Zari's season, you totally can see that, you know. Oh, I noticed that we've barely seen him shirtless. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Just because there's none of the gratuitous But now you can imagine him in Arizona going to like some Italian restaurant. Sure. Filling up on bread basket after bread basket. And he's, you know, he likes his carbs. Yeah, I mean, so do I. I (laughs) Who doesn't? Totally get it. Come on. Um, What's the biggest challenge that comes along when a guy, when the lead, because it could be a woman too, Mm -hmm. when the lead starts being very clearly into just one person? Because Ari- That happens much more on Bachelorette. Oh, does it? And it's a, it's a, it's a problem. There is, you know, we sort of come like a tread water season Uh where it is difficult where Andy Dorfman season, I remember being, thinking that it was, it was really Josh Murray. Uh Uh-huh. And then Nick was sort of, at, he, he certainly provided some intrigue. I think had Nick grown the beard, mm. he would have been more of a, if, if he didn't Lumber, look so much like if Peter Lumber McNichol. If had yeah, come exactly. instead of Norm Cornick. Not Kornick. Peter McNichol, yeah. Nick, yes, exactly. We used to call him Norm Cornick. Norm Cornick, I remember that. Yeah. That's right, yes. <laughs> if we had had Lumberjack Nick, whole different situation. Lumberjack, Lumberjack Nick might have been a whole different situation. Yeah, just a totally different mm-hmm. guy. Because yeah. Ari, he, he keeps saying and expressing that he doesn't know anything about Lauren, but then he really likes her. And he's just like, I need her to like it's get a there. Bizarre with me. Po- yeah. And that's because well, that's what was so interesting. I remember 
in episode six where he chose Lauren to tell that story to. Yes. And not Chelsea. Yes. Like that would have been the person he told the other, the single mom and say, hey, right. let me tell you my experience. With no, he tells Lauren simply to, it was like, let me tell you the, the darkest, you know, most personal story that's ever happened to me. Right. And just to try and pull something out of you. Right. And it was like mildly successful. Was mildly successful. She just doesn't. Ha- I don't think she had the same type of experience to share. No, it's like she you was know, engaged. I was to left her in a Chuck E. Cheese one time for forty five <laughs> minutes. Yeah. Um, I, she was in, she was engaged to basically mm-hmm. her high school sweetheart. Yeah, and but the engagement didn't last very long. Mm-hmm. We will find out on her hometown. I believe she's actually been engaged twice. Oh, really? Yes. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is why she's a classic bachelorette gal. Guys, just fall for her, right? Because she's quiet engaged, and pretty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I don't want to undersell Absolutely. her. I'm sure she's nice, but mm-hmm. like it just seems like that's kind of what's yeah. happening. And it's interesting because she is such like a um, counterweight to like the many challenging women that he has, or more yes. challenging, like the combination of baby Becca, Baca, mm-hmm. Kendall. I think Jacqueline. if you want to call her Baca, you got to sell it there. Like, Baca. <laughs> I'll start doing. Like that. I'm down with that, but you got to at least you know, <laughs> got to lean into it. Yeah, more. you got to lean into it. Yeah, like those women are so just more dynamic, at least yes. on television. Well, let me ask you this. Of these girls, who do you think is is most most equipped? Adult Becca seems most ready for the life of Ari, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. She's kind of chill. Feel like she's got the wardrobe for it. Mm-hmm. She seems like interested in like making him happy, mm-hmm. and is sort of like wants to acknowledge emotions but not really fully indulge them. Which yeah. I think is, is Ari as well. He like wants to like mention that he has an emotion, but he doesn't want to like dwell on it. He's not like looking to like unpack how he's feeling. No. And my, my, many of these women do want to unpack his feelings and their own. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think I think he finds that like alluring for five minutes and then gets bored. Yeah. He's so, not into feelings. So, yeah, he's not. So I would yeah. say adult Becca seems the most ready for it. Mm-hmm. And then I guess maybe Lauren. Who else are we choosing for? Tia? Kendall no way. and Tia. Tia is a firebrand and she's too smart for him. Interesting. I, I'm just Do not- you find, let me ask you a question about Tia. Yes. So not to jump all over, but I know you're a big Tia fan. Sure. Tia, you know, says very, she makes it very clear. She's never really been in love. This mm-hmm. is the most she's been in love. I can't believe guys are not lining up to to court her like she is amazing she's awesome yeah she is awesome we had there were, there was one contestant that actually went on bachelor in paradise became mm-hmm. a very big star but she was somebody who she happened to be in la and she was sort of dating this guy that randomly i kind of knew because he he worked for our uh, marketing department and this is fascinating they were starting must to be like, serious you they were starting to like make out and she's like no no no, i can't do this i can't do this i might be bachelorette Oh. So she stopped. So do you think Tia ever thought to herself, even like two or three years ago, I might be going on The Bachelor. I cannot get too no. involved with anyone. No. Because I find it fascinating. Why? How has she never well, been in love before? She's only 26. I think she seems older. Mm-hmm. I think she's got the gravitas of like she does. two to three years older mm-hmm. than that, which is one of the reasons why I like her. Yeah. Maybe she's self-aware enough to know that like any feelings she might have had weren't like really love. Mm. Okay. Let's give her some credit. You don't think it's somebody who just says, gosh, I'm, I'm preparing for Bachelorette. I don't think you pursue a seven year degree if if you're like planning a life of reality television. Okay, fair enough. I just don't think mm-hmm. that, that I just think that Tia is cool. I don't know. She's very cool. I just think that she's like too much fun for Ari. Like I just think he needs someone who just wants to like just drink wine with him, which yeah. is not that hard to find, but I don't think it's necessarily that common on a reality show. Okay, so you sort of take Tia out and Kendall's interesting too. Yeah, she's quirky. Mm-hmm. I, I just think that he doesn't want spice like that. I just I think that he's like probably like give me yeah. give me white rice mm-hmm. and I'm I'm good. There, there's sometimes a little too. I feel like we don't show Ari in in the best light either. Well, you he know, clearly he feels just doesn't like know how to do it. Right? He doesn't feel as as you know as maybe mask on as some of the other bachelors. I think he's it, a sensitive bachelor. I would say if you were doing like if you could redo or like do reshoots, which mm-hmm. obviously you can't, yeah. you made a good point. You gotta surround him with more guys. You should have like brought in friends for him mm-hmm. the way that sometimes you do. Well he was very good if you remember in the first episode, I feel like we cut it way back. But there's um, when Sean Lowe came to visit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He obviously mm-hmm. needs like some other like guys yeah. around to play. He was off good of. with Harrison on the bench in Paris. Totally. Okay. Let's talk about Harrison. This week's Chris Harrison TRT was 67 seconds. That's one minute and seven seconds down from two minutes last week. That's low. This is low for episode seven. Does Chris Harrison keep track of his own TRT? You do hear from him when when certain things are cut. Like uh-huh. he's very upset, and I will say it was a mistake. In retrospect, that the wrestling date 
we left out the part where Harrison uh, broke a chair over. He did. Pretty boy Pitbull Kenny King. Oh, that's funny. To help with, yeah, that's mm-hmm. funny. Was Kenny paid per word for that appearance? By the way, yes, yeah, so he got nothing. He got zero dollars. Yep. Mm-hmm. That was perfect. <laughs> Um, it's been a lot of Chris this season, but I'll be honest, I'm happy to see him. Oh, it's great. Absolutely. Yeah, he's been helpful. He's- he he is no, he he's very, very good. And I think it is Ari, there is a real friendship and relationship there. And to your point, he's been away so long. It's not like a guy who's like, I got this, I've done I, I yeah. just did this six months ago. He's still finding his way too. Did Ari ever like mention like, wow, I can't believe how like how much this has changed or that has changed? No, I mean, it's interesting. The other thing you have to remember, we talked about it, I think, a little bit in the first episode, was he was on Emily season, which right. never was in the mansion. So That in wasn't terms in of the just mansion? Geography, no, we had to go to North Carolina because that's where our daughter was. Oh, my was. God, I forgot about that. Yeah, so he had never been to the mansion. So even that— Oh, I totally forgot about the that. The whole thing felt brand new to him. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, the most said word this week was family. We have a super cut of that. Yes. And I can't wait to meet your family. He wants to meet my family. We're about her family. To meet her family. Picture your family. Julio and his family. Lauren's family. They could be my family. Part of the family. Food and family. I can't wait to see my family. Big theme this week. Big theme. Just talking about family, constant, like, who am I going to meet, et cetera, yes. et cetera. I'm pretty devastated we will not be meeting because family. Boy, I will tell you, we all played that out. Like, what would that be like? What did you think? What did you make of the Becca is missing story from two weeks ago? Just bizarre. I mean, I had known about it a couple of days before because they we got a weird. They somebody had reached out and said, you know, we're looking for comments. Yeah. We're doing the story, and we were like, oh yeah, nothing. I think it was like the OC register or something that that was doing. It was nothing big, and then it blew up into this thing. It was pretty weird. It just like what was the mom thinking, reporting her daughter missing like that? After six days of not very, talking to her. Very strange. Really weird. Did you all... No, was, you really wish she got a hometown. What was the read on Becca when the show was going on? She's great. Like, the short hair is different. Yeah. She's sort of like an old soul. So even though she's mm-hmm. 22, you sort of felt that... Um, she was almost like an old throwback, like, femme fatale. From, yeah. You know, like a Barbara Stanwyck or something like that. Like, it was very... She has sort of that throaty voice. Like, definitely feels older... I like her. Then she is. Great sexual energy. Honestly. Totally. Just a great, great change for the energy. show. Like Absolutely. let's just like it's nice no, that's again, like overt. It was, it was, it, when you have that and it's something different yeah. to play with. It's also it's like fantastic. One of the reasons Paradise is so funny is because it's so overtly sexual. Yeah. Versus The Bachelor, which is like relatively like prim and proper. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like refreshing to have Bachelor Becca's energy being like, Yeah, this is a show like ultimately is like you need to know if you're gonna like have good sex together. Yeah, that's right. And so some she, of them will say that the and talk about how the physical is important, but she yeah, like from the beginning, pretty much that was that was it. Yeah. yeah, I wish that Ari would say that in regards to Lauren B. By the way, he's like, I'm just like so into her. I'm like, yeah, we get it, dude. You just want to sleep with her, right? <laughs> I can't fine. wait until <laughs> you guys see when we st- start episode nine. The way he talks about, you know, the, where they are, they go to Peru. Sure. The way he's like, we're in Peru, and it's like, no, you're not that excited to be in Peru. You're just excited. Fantasy suites are happening. <laughs> indeed, indeed, he is. Uh, fantasy suites will be happening, but before that. Tomorrow night begins Bachelor Winter Games. BWG. BWG. Yes. Did you go to the? B-W-G. Did you go to the? It's like BW3s, oh, I but did. BWG. Exactly. Did yeah. you go to the entire filming? I did not go to the entire filming. So it was. It shot was in, in such Southern good Vermont. shape. I was there for the first episode, <laughs> and I was like, "This thing, I don't need to be here. This thing is perfect." What is like the number one selling point of Bachelor Winter Games to anyone who's like, "Eh, do I need four more hours of the Bachelor in I my will, life?" Uh, a couple of things. One is for those of you that really miss Bachelor Pad. Mm-hmm. There's some pad dynamics. Okay. Here. We finally have, they're not playing for the money. That's the, but you do have some competitions, which are really fun. What are they playing for? Uh, To be the, they do couple up by the end. And the winning couple is the reigning couple of Bachelor World. I see. So it's really about pride. It's kind of of what we're saying here. National pride. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Do they have to compete in, in couples like they did on Bachelor Pad? No, they're um, as countries. They start no, not uh, not even as countries. They're, they're individuals. Okay, and then it goes into couple competition towards you know where Bachelor Pad would sort of there. There was a moment where it would say, okay, you're committing to this person. Sure, that you're going to see the end. So it starts there, but it's it's four. You know, it's only four episodes, so it's biathlon. 
It's speed skating, it's downhill skiing, and it's um, couples oh, ice wow. dancing. Oh, wow. Couples yes. ice dancing. Mm-hmm. Yes. How exciting. It's who, great. Who are the breakout stars? I'm sure you have a sense. I, I mean, well, we about- know who the, the American ones, there are certain ones that are always gold. Claire, mm-hmm. great to see her back. I can't believe she's back, though. She, lo- I watched a little bit of the pilot or the first one. Yeah. She looks really pretty. She's gorgeous. Yeah. She's, she's looking, gorgeous. And you'll see great. she gets in the middle of a love, tri- love oh, triangle. Oh, good. Shout out to Claire. Yeah, shout out to Claire. And uh, one of the guys is a breakout foreign guy. Benoit. Benoit. He's from Canada, Benoit. right? Yes. I, when I saw his picture and his name, I was like, okay, well, Benoit's going to be the bachelor here in America. It's only a matter of time. A season of Benoit, maybe it's an off cycle season, would be amazing. Uh, By the way, I tweeted saying, like, Benoit is amazing. All these Canadians are like, you guys are finally seeing what we've known forever. Oh, my God. The other foreign breakout cast member is Yuki from Japan. Oh. Amazing. Okay. And she doesn't speak English. She does right? not speak a word of English. Although then she sort of suddenly learned some phrases. Great I, energy. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm going to talk more of Winter Games on Thursday on the Bachelor Party B side. But yes. now that you've opened up the door for like other spinoffs, mm-hmm. I think there's a lot to work with with these women. I agree. Like Tia, I love. And mm-hmm. so if she's not going to be the Bachelorette, maybe she will. I don't know. Like, how do we get her on television outside of Paradise? Well, there's something. I mean, we can call it Little Rock, Big Heart. Or like, oh, li- I like that. Okay. Little Rock, Big Spunk, or something. Ark and Sassy. Yeah, something yeah. like mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Like, there's just so many things to do. One thing that Bill always talks about is why not like cut together the old seasons into like two hour blocks, like the highlights, basically, like tell like a love story of like. I've always thought there is a, like literally a Bachelor, streaming service. Yeah. A- everything you've ever needed for the Bachelor. Would you ever consider trying to like conquer the social media stars by being like to someone like Raven? Had she moved to LA, being like Raven, you move to LA and we'll chronicle your move. Like it'll be like a short like four episode. Series. I think if you had the again, if we had the access to a thing to to something like that, uh-huh. yes, absolutely. Okay. There, there's a million things you can do. Yeah, like there's just so much like talent here. Yeah. Um, well, casting the next Bachelorette, will you have to take in mind how the ratings are slightly down for Ari's season? I think. Yes, a little bit, but I I also think, you know, you never know. You never know. Yeah. I mean, I, I will say we thought Nick was like a roll of the dice because it was a guy from Paradise, right? Ostensibly, and it was, and he did, you know, he did better than I thought. I think yeah. Ari's not as high as I would have thought. Uh huh. At the end of the day, it's also what what sort of helped Ari's season is these girl even if if you don't like Ari the girls are great mm-hmm. so I think if we get the right girl with the right guys it'll you know it'll do it'll do good yeah you just never know it's like it's like catching lightning in a bottle would you try a celebrity like someone no. more famous than Jesse Palmer no absolutely not would you try a celebrity yeah. like what about like someone from like the Eagles who like is not that famous but he's a Super Bowl winner I just think the thing with that is you don't believe the love story. Them, they well, they they all come in and say, "Well, I don't really need to do this. I could date twenty five women if I wanted to." <laughs> so it's like, okay, then, I could date twenty five women, and I do. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I mean, right. So that's that's always been the problem, right? Hmm. That's that is tricky because I think the NBA players. I think about this a lot. Like mm-hmm. Chandler Parsons would just be an ideal bachelor. We've discussed this. Before. Chandler Parsons is somebody we actually did. You spoke to. to, yeah. We considered the biggest part of him was just the timing. Right. His his season gets in well. Late. He's been injured a lot, so he's got some free time. No, he might be able to do it now. Absolutely. <laughs> but someone like him, he also doesn't again doesn't need to go on the Bachelor. Right. He's, he dates supermodels. Also, do you think he's too tall? Maybe I don't know. No, I think it'll be fine. Okay. He's he's the legit six ten though. Oh yeah, no, no. Believe me, I I sat with him. He's he's a big man. Clay Thompson size would probably be ideal. Yes, I think that's six, six. that's right. Six, yeah, he's exactly. listed as six seven, but he's a really mm-hmm. six six. Like that's that's kind of I think the best. I think that's right in the yeah. yeah ben was the, really tall. Yes, Ben's per- a perfect Ben's, Ben. Ben's a tall guy. He was perfect in every way. <laughs> Uh, Rob, thank you so much for coming today. Oh my God, of course, absolutely. I hope you come back. Maybe we I'll can. Always come maybe back we can it. get some uh, some Winter Games insight from you. Anytime. Um, thanks again for listening. And I know you're into The Bachelor, so you should check out this week's Shack House on the Ringer Podcast Network. Chris Harrison appeared. He's talking about golf, but I'm pretty sure they also sneak in some Bachelor talk. So you want to check that out. You can find me on Twitter at Juliet Littman, on Instagram at Juliet Littman. And lastly, if you like this podcast, please do me a favor rate it, review it, recommend it to your friends, get them to subscribe. Thank you. Thanks again to Hotel Tonight. I can't tell you how much I've been loving their service. Hotel Tonight helps you book amazing deals at a great hotels. And even though the name's Hotel Tonight, you can actually book up to 100 days in advance in top destinations and up to a week in advance everywhere else. 
They work with cool top rated hotels and they don't feature long endless lists of options you have to scroll through. Instead, they show you a select list of the best deals at the best hotels at any given time. It's simply the best. So start scoring amazing deals at incredible hotels and download the Hotel Tonight app now. 